So by now you've probably seen 4B, my 4 legged robot that folds into a ball. What I'm going to do in this video is explain all the things that I'm not happy about. Let's jump right into it and start from the basics. How do you turn off a ball? This is something that is bothering me very much because to turn it off, I need to open it up and disconnect the connector. This is not something that is that easy because if for example it has a touchpad, the microcontroller still needs to remain on to detect the touch. If I'm going to use this feature, I need to make sure that the quiescent current in sleep mode is very low. Otherwise, I need to use a switch that cuts the power completely. The next issue is the servo pouring circuit. As you saw in the build video, I don't have a main cutoff for these servos. And this basically makes the onboard battery charging circuit useless. My main concern with this is that our module slash my controller has a limited number of pins. So I'm using 12 of these pins to control the servo motors and some other pins for the sensors. Apart from the cutoff control line, ideally we would have two more pins, one to monitor the battery voltage and the other one to detect the USB. But like I showed you, our module is running out of pins. So we either have to free up some pins or use another slave microcontroller. I can also use this larger PLE module from Cypress Semiconductors. But it doesn't really matter what option you choose to go with, because first we need to create space on our PCB. And right now we don't have much, so what I was thinking was eliminating this infrared sensor. Back when I designed this PCB, I was going to use this sensor to have positional feedback for the Z-axis. But as you might know, infrared sensors are not very accurate, they vary with the surface color and texture. So in my opinion, we can completely eliminate this sensor. And this way we can make room for other components. On this tiny little PCB, I also have a gyroscope, magnetometer and an accelerometer, all combined into one chip. And my plan is to use this data from this sensor to make my rolling algorithm more robust. The rolling algorithm that I implemented in the first test video still needs to be improved because it's still running in open loop, so we need to get angular feedback from the IMU to know which leg the robot has to actuate to continue its rolling motion. This is not something that's going to be easy to do and in fact I'm still not 100% sure if it can be done. I mean just getting it to roll is one thing, but getting it to roll in a straight line is going to be a different kind of challenge. What worries me the most is the robot's center of gravity. Most of the mass is located at the base, which is being held at the bottom. This makes the robot super stable during walking, but it also makes our rolling motion a little bit harder. Ideally, this mass would be at the center, but to do that, we need to move the base upwards, and that will slightly increase the robot's diameter to fit the other linkages. This relates to another issue, which is limiting the robot's kinematic chain. The servos I'm using have a 60 degree angular range, and for the female linkage, all that 60 degrees is being used to just open and close the sphere. So at this angle here, this linkage is at its limit, and even though the base is almost hitting the table, it cannot be pushed any higher than that. This limitation also doesn't allow the robot to compensate the angle of the base. I should also probably place some rubber on the tip so that the robot won't slip on smooth surfaces. Another possible issue is with the robot's material. Like I showed you in the first videos, the legs are made from nylon and they are a little flexible. This is going to act as a little suspension when the four legs are opened, but when closed in ball mode, it's not going to be rigid. I can refine this by making an outer cage that connects to the base, which will act both as a support and also will help the robot align the legs a little bit better. And putting some tiny magnets on the edge can also help out with the alignment. But to do this we would probably exceed the robot's weight limitation. So maybe then I could also switch to the higher torque servo motors that I mentioned in the build video. Some other things that can be improved is the battery which is still without the current limit protection. The female linkages are also a little flimsy. I would also make a smaller tip, but I think this charging hole here needs to be all covered up so it doesn't stop the robot from rolling. And the last thing that I would change is the microcontroller programming pins. Currently they are connected to the same two control lines of the servos and these two motors are freaking out during reflashing. So I think this completes the list of issues this robot have. Let me know in the comments below which issues I tackle first. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to start with the rolling algorithm or change the mechanical design completely so that it becomes a better ball. So please give me some good advice of what to do. So for this video that's it. Happy Christmas, Happy New Year and thank you for being part of this community. I will see you next year. Thanks for watching.